The Friendship Center movement is, in some places in this country, 60, 70, more formally 50 years old. It's, it's, it's an old movement with a lot of capacity that is built into the community. And, and we are in this moment that is, is called now reconciliation. And, and I don't know, I, 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 to me, it, I'm all in because uh, I've got kids. I got two uh, kids. They are in the van, so I do have to cut this short this evening. <laughs> they, uh, Fort Erie's safe. We're not in Buffalo, you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got to hang out with uh, the kids in the day uh, summer day camp, and um, it was tr triggering and traumatic and hilarious and amazing. I spent. Um, most of my summers as a teenager, as a camp counselor or a camp coordinator, and so I knew what Riley was going through with, uh, you know, all the kids running around having fun, planning activities and all that. Hey, 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 hey. Right guy. How's it going? It's good. Right, give it's you a handshake, but you know. Chest, oh. chest bump. Do you have kids? I have one. Okay, cool. Newborn, two months. So. Oh, congratulations, man. Thank That's you. That's awesome. I got two. They're in the car, so I got to get going. But uh, I, uh, I worked at summer jobs at friendship centers pretty much my whole life, and always worked with kids. And I, I love that, um, you know, to be a part of the community, kind of bringing up the next generation. You find it inspiring to work with them. You find it like really fulfills your life. Is it something you you want to do as, as a career? Yeah, I love it. I love it every day. You know, you get to you get to bring the kids in, and hopefully, hopefully inspire them, like you said and try and get them to achieve their goals. And yeah. that's, that's the best part about it is there's, it's, a, it's rewarding to be able to do something like that. It's awesome, man. I'm pretty inspiring myself when I was, I was gonna offer like to volunteer for the day. I don't know if, if you need the help, but like I, I, I'm pretty inspiring. All right, well, if you wanna help out, here you go. Meet them in the gym and uh, we'll see you in there. All right. All right, man, let's go. I told that joke in uh, Saskatchewan one time, but leaving my kids in the van, and boy, people were just, just shut right down. They're so mad. After the show, uh, an elderly woman, she chased me out to the parking lot. She says, a stum, fat boy, a stum. She's got her walker. She's chasing me. Huh? Come here, come here. And I didn't know what I had said to offend her. I, that's not my goal. My goal is for everyone to have fun. I want everyone to have fun. And I could tell she was mad. And she says, yo, I have Facebook too, you know. And I said, oh, yeah, OK. Great, uh, add me up. <laughs> I don't know, like what, what you're getting at, you know? She says, I'm gonna go on Facebook and tell everyone Mr. Funny Man likes child abuse. <laughs> I was like, no, no you're not. No, I, just, like, I don't know. I, no. Hey, Riley. How's it going? I got this. You go take a break. All right. I tried to get in there and run a game uh, with them, and that was uh, a failure. I'm your grumpiest camp counselor, Ryan, and we're going to have a lot of fun today, I think. There are a couple of tough cookies uh, in the group, and uh, it definitely reminded me of myself and my friends <laughs> at that time. And so you can't be mad. You're like, oh. That's what they call karma. Yeah, coming back at you a little bit. And uh... before we start today, guys, I need to stretch. <clears throat> What's so funny? <laughs> today at summer camp, we are gonna play a game called Giants, Sorcerers, and Dwarves, okay? Giants. Kill sorcerers. Sorcerers kill dwarves. Dwarves kill giants. It is messed up, but it's my game. I knew it was a failure when the balls started flying at my head and things were starting to go sideways a little bit. Any questions? Any questions? Too slow. Too slow. Ha! Um, it's programs like these that really inform um, 
th those early days of gaining those leadership skills and all of the, 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 the skills that you need to be confident as a young person and to, to understand what it means to contribute to your community as a young person. And Teams, please make your way to the green lines and let the battle begin. On the count of three, the battle will begin. Oh, when I count to three, each of you two teams will strike your pose. One. Two. Three. Go back to the green lines. Come on, that's a tie. Come on, man. Let's go. Is this something that um, you're gonna make a career of? Do you have you know other ambitions inside the Friendship Center or do you kind of feel like you're home now? Uh, honestly, I love this position. I, I don't see myself changing anytime soon and I, I, I would hope not, but um, maybe once I get older and I can't run around as much, then maybe we'll look <laughs> at different different positions. But you're, you're looking at what happens. You yeah. Gain a few pounds, you get these. This is weird, hey? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, this is your future. <laughs> That's what programs like that really, really show is, you know, yes, you're here to have fun. Yes, you're here to play. You're here to hang out with your friends. And you better put those chairs away and set up the, the tables for the seniors that are coming in later, right? Like, it's, it's that kind of thing where you understand your place uh, in the circle when you're a part of a program like that. <laughs> but she, she was really mad at me. And she said, you think it's funny. I said, I'm, I don't think it's funny. I don't think, and there's nothing funny about child abuse. How dare you? And she said, no, your jokes, your jokes about your kids and your vehicle. I said, I was joking. And, and by the way, lady, I'm a survivor, okay? <laughs> if anyone can talk about being locked in a van, it's me. Because <laughs> I've survived it. And I'm here to tell my truth. <laughs> Who here hasn't, honestly? sat outside of a casino or a bingo hall just once in your life <laughs> while mom and dad went and played their last 20 bucks. Who? Who? Show of hands. <laughs> None of you. Everyone has. We've all been locked in a van. Back in the day, that's how you earned your first eagle feather, okay? <laughs> and we get to feed the elders tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're really looking forward to having some of this. So you definitely want to impress them, right? You got to get it right. They're, they're who I'm cooking for. If they don't, yeah. if they don't like it, word gets out. You, oh. you make one bad bowl of corn soup one time, you're done. You're fired as the corn soup maker. So, sure. We're going to bring that soup now to the seniors program, and we're going to serve it for lunch. And so if it goes bad, um, Carl's going to blame me because I had a little hand in stirring and adding some ingredients. So uh, I just, and I'm going to find out because I'm calling bingo after lunch, and I'll be the guy that says, hey, how was the soup? I made it with Carl, and if it sucks, then I'm probably going to need security to walk me out of the building or something. I don't know, because <laughs> corn soup is serious, man. You don't, it's like wild rice for me, you know? Like, sometimes I'll look at someone's wild rice, and I'm like, Awesome, look at that. A thousand years of tradition in that bowl. Yeah, so you've tried it? Yeah. And uh, I didn't ruin it? We added a little uh, fish juice and wild rice just to try and make it to your seasoning. <laughs> so, like, it's okay. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Is there more? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just for you. Maybe oh. Just for you. That's so good. <laughs> like the corn is like a nice dense bite. The beans kind of melt. Mm -hmm. Then you get like a nice little shot of meat. Mm -hmm. It's um, there's not there's abs there's actually nothing like this. Like there's nothing, there's no other food like this. So I understand you have a bit of a job for me this <laughs> afternoon. You're laughing. That uh, can't already. be good. <laughs> <laughs> You're in for it. Yeah, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be the volunteer bingo caller this afternoon. Are there um, any tips for survival that'll ensure that I make it out alive? I'm just gonna tell you, call the correct number. <laughs> oh, no. 
Okay. And even then, you may not survive. Okay. They're tough. They're a tough crowd. But they like bingo, and they're looking forward to it. Oh, well, yes. um, I'll do my best. I was, um, I was calling bingo in northern British Columbia at an event, and uh, I've done a lot of hard things in my life. That might be one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. So, uh, so thanks for letting me, letting me crash your bingo game. Uh, we have a few rules, no fist fights, uh, no heckling, you oh, can't heckle. Well now you know you're going to get it twice as bad. Right? Okay, okay yeah. so lots of heckling, extra heckling, thank you. And, uh, and uh, no smack talk to each other. We are here to play a respectful game and a good game. And these are, these are our prizes, we have some Kleenex, we have some penne pasta, we have a a ripe avocado, feel that, feels nice, eh? Yeah, yeah, there you go. I, 22. Under the O, 64. O, 64. Both some good numbers. Under the G, 54. We have a good bingo. Congratulations to the young lady. Ooh, the applesauce. The applesauce has been taken. <laughs> so there was on my reserve, there was this, uh, there was this man who, uh, his wife had passed away a long time ago and he was trying to date and uh, he was an older man, he was, he was in his uh, uh, late 70s. And uh, he picked up a young woman from the senior center, she was in her, her mid 60s and, uh, and they were driving to bingo and he wanted to flirt a little bit and you know, he was kinda looking over at her as they were driving and he's kinda winking and, and paying real close attention to her as he was driving and she said, holy, you're passionate. And he goes, yes I am very passionate. She goes, no, the bingo hall, you're passing it, you're passing it. <laughs> that was a cheap one, but I'll take it, I'll take it. Cheap joke, cheap joke. Okay, this one, we are going to play one more, one line, uh, in any direction. It's, it's such a unique uh, place, mm. and you know, a, a vibrant place, and a place with, you know, all kinds of history and capacity. And when you think about people that have come through the doors of Friendship Centers that, that you've visited mm -hmm. or, or that you, you've been a part of, um, what kind of words come to mind when you think about the community that surrounds a Friendship Center? What, what, what comes to mind for you? I think of it in the context of Longhouse and our actual traditional communities. Mm. I think about it that everyone when they walk into a friendship center should feel like they're at home and feel free to be themselves and bring their best selves. And our job as helpers is to help them get there. So that again, when they walk in the door, everybody's safe, everybody's cared for, everybody's free to be who they were meant to be. They don't have to worry about the pressures of colonization or the two worlds we live in. And there's not a judgment placed on you because of who you are, indigenous or non-indigenous, by the way, yeah. which is the beauty of a friendship center. Yeah. You walk in the door, you're gonna get help. Yeah, so for me, for me, that's what it's actually all about is that, that sort of intergenerational community where you can come to a place and it's, it's babies, it's young people, it's, you know, uh, grade school kids at summer camp, it's uh, high school kids work in the summer camp, you know, to right to the seniors. I was at a powwow last weekend, hanging out with some friends. It came to our time to sing. So we sat down and we were all like. And everyone was standing around going, exactly, bro. Talk about uh, how, how the drum contributes to positive mental health and, 
oh, and to, wow. to more sort of a more positive lifestyle for for young indigenous folks. Okay, over time we've uh, we've learned a lot. Uh, we've we've contacted a lot of people like yourself, and uh, the message is always the same. It's um, they talk about this drum being a living a living being. Uh, you, as you know, the name for the drum is Dewega. And what that doesn't mean it's a piece of leather sitting on top of a, a frame. What it means is it's a living heart. So it is the heart of our nation. We hold it here. And when we sing, we, we sing in, with uh, the reverence of prayer in an understanding. So when the men come and they sit at the drum, they know they have to be in a good mind. Fixed up a feather for you. I think it came out pretty good. We would be honored if you would accept this on behalf of the drum, the singers, all the people who have got together for the past 25 years to bring us to this point. You coming here culminates this month where we've joined the two drums finally. We've got integrity in all these men here sitting here. We've got integrity now in our music because we're going to be putting forth both. And for you to remember us and to remember that happening, we want this to come to you. You know, uh yeah, I wasn't raised. I wasn't raised with my language, or a really grounded cultural understanding. I mean, um, you know, residential school. Um, you know, the '60s group, all the things. Um, you know, float through so many of our families and 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 my family and. Um, and it was at a friendship center in the mid 90s when I sat down at the drum for the first time. And um, I embarrassed myself, man. I, I, you know, not only was I offbeat and I couldn't sing and I was too shy to try to sing and all of that, but I also asked the elder that was teaching the class then um, to write down the words to the songs that we were singing. And he was like, um, yeah, they're, uh, there, there, aren't, there aren't any words to that song. <laughs> Those aren't words. And I was like, oh, but they are. Those are words. Uh, way hey yaha, this, this eagle feather, you know, that... Um, this, is, this, this is the way that we, that we acknowledge each other. And um, to be acknowledged this way, you know, from the drum is, uh, is really, really powerful. Uh, for me, and to say it bluntly, like white folks can't have these, you know. <laughs> it's these are these feathers are like actually by law, like that's the truth. But um, <laughs> but also I'm joking. No, they can't. You can't. If, you, if you're watching this, white white folks, first of all, thank you. Second of all, you can't carry eagle feathers. And you know this, but 
um, you know, to be here and to be welcome to sit down at the drum and to know that for 25 years here at Fort Erie, they've been working with that drum to bring health and wellness to the community and to help young men like myself become better versions of, our, of myself and, and ourselves. Um, yeah, man, I don't know if you planned this, but that's a pretty damn good way to end the story, you know. Um, you ever been raking your yard? You know, in the fall, the leaves fall down. Ever been raking your yard and ever stopped and thought to yourself, oh, I wonder if this actually hurts Mother Earth. <laughs> it's a great journey. And, uh, you know, last night I got a chance to talk to my kids on the phone and and they're like, you know, when are you coming home? And we miss you. And I was like, I miss you too. And and uh, yeah, they're they're in the van, so I do have to. It's the last cheap joke I have. That's the lock my kids in the van joke. That's it. That's all. That's seven o'clock. The crew doesn't want to work overtime. I've got to pee. My left foot is asleep. I might fall down right now when I stand up, but. Thanks for having me, Fort Erie, and uh, yeah, Bamapi. We'll see you again. Miigwech. <laughs>